Welcome to Electron Line. Let's take a look at this example. Here we have another simple truss example. We need to find the support forces and we need to find the forces on the members. Also, we need to find out which members are under compression and which members are under tension. Let's start with that. Here we have a load force pulling on this joint right there in this connection. If this beam was not connected here and the force came down in this direction, this beam would simply slide this way. This pin is preventing the beam from doing that, which puts this beam under compression. Now let's imagine that this pin here was not connected to this beam. As this is coming down, this, beam, this would rotate in this direction, this beam would be pulled forward in this direction. This pin is preventing this beam from moving in that direction, so it's pulling on the beam. That means this beam is under tension. And finally, we can see that if this was not connected here, and this was able to slide in this direction, this pin is preventing this beam from sliding this way, which means that pushes this beam under compression. So now we've determined which beams are under compression, which beams are under tension. Next, we're going to find the support forces. What we can do there is we can say that the sum of all the torques about point A equals zero. We'll use this as a pivot point first. We have two forces acting on the overall structure. Remember that a truss can be considered to be a solid structure. This is equal to, this force gives this a counterclockwise torque, that's a positive torque, that means F sub C multiplied times the distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, which is 9 meters, minus, this gives the, the truss a clockwise torque, minus 6,000 newtons, times the distance from here to here, which is 9 plus 6, or 15 meters, which means that F sub C is equal to 6,000 newtons, let me move this over to the other side, times 15 divided by 9 when we divide both sides by 9. And this gives us 6,000 uh, times 15 divided by 9 equals, and, wow, that's a lot. And that makes sense, actually, because the 6,000 Newton force is farther out. That means the force here, supported, would be equal to 10,000 newtons. Which means that the force at A can be found by saying that the sum of the force in the y direction must add up to zero. We have a positive F sub A. Wow. A positive F sub A. I was thinking there for a moment because I think I'm going to end up with a negative answer which in a way does actually make sense, and we'll see in just a moment why. So we have F sub A in a positive direction, as we've drawn it, plus F sub C, plus 10,000 newtons, and minus the 6,000 newtons of the load. If we solve this for F sub A, surprisingly we get F sub A is equal to minus 4,000 newtons. In other words, this is not wrestling on F sub A, this actually has to be held down by force equal to 4,000 newtons, which makes a lot of sense. Based upon this here, if this was the only force acting on it in this direction, this would simply tip over the truss, and so this would have to be held down to be able to hold down to that 6,000 newton load. So it does make sense. Now we need to find the magnitude of the forces on the trusses. What we can do here, or I should say on the members, what we can do here is draw the forces, Act on pin B, there's a force of tension, which means that the beam pulls in this direction and the beam pulls in this direction. This is a force of compression, compression, so the beam pushes back here and the beam pushes back here. This is under compression, so the beam pushes this way and the beam pushes this way. Let's take a look at this joint first. When we draw the triangle, we get the following. We get the force coming down in this direction, that's 6,000 newtons. We have a force acting in this direction. See here, that probably has to be a, a force like this. Let's call this the force from B to C. And then we have a force from B to A, which is in this direction. That's what makes sense, 
But notice what we are missing, however, is we're missing the angles. So we don't know yet what the angles are of, these, of this particular triangle. Let's go ahead and try to find those. First of all, we can find these angles right here. Notice if this is 6 meters and this is 8 meters, and then this must be 10 meters because we have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. We can then find this angle here. Let's call it theta. We can say that theta is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite divided by the adjacent, which is 6. So theta is equal to 8 divided by 6 equals, take the arc tangent, and we get 53.13 degrees. 53.13 degrees. So that's the angle theta right here. That makes this angle here, well, let's see, we may not need that angle yet. Let's try this angle here. Let's call this angle phi. Here we have the big triangle. That means we have the opposite side is 8 and the adjacent side is 15. Phi is equal to the arctangent of the opposite side 8 divided by the adjacent side 15. 8 divided by 15, take the arctangent of that, and we get 28.07 degrees. Phi is equal to 28.07 degrees. Now, let's take a look. BA is this side right here. That means if this angle is phi, that means this angle here is phi as well. So this angle here is the angle phi. Looking at this angle here, that means this angle here is the angle theta. If theta is 53.13 degrees, then this internal angle is 90 minus that. 90 minus 53.13, we get 36.87 degrees. 36.87 degrees. That means that this angle here would be 90 plus phi, and phi is 28.07. That gives us an angle of 118.07 degrees. And then this angle would be 180 minus those two. So make this a, a minus plus 180 and minus 118.07 equals 2506. 25.06 degrees. So now we have the three angles of the triangle. We're now ready to find the force on member BA and member BC. We can do that using the law of sines. 6,000 newtons divided by the sine of the angle directly across, which is 25.06 degrees, is equal to BA divided by the angle of the sine directly across, which is the sine of 36.87 degrees, which is equal to BC, divided by the angle directly across, which is 118.07 degrees. We're now ready to find BA. BA is equal to 6,000 newtons, divided by the sine of 25.06 degrees, times the sine of 36.87 degrees. 6,000 divided by 25.06, take the sine of that, and times 36.87, take the sine of that, equals, and it's 8,500 newtons. And then we find BC, which is equal to 6,000 newtons, divided by the sine of 25.06 degrees, times the sine of 118.07 degrees. 6,000 divided by 25.06, take the sine of that, equals, and times 118.07, take the sine of that, equals, and we get 12,500 newtons for that force. Which means we found the force on BA, so BA is right here, we found BA, and we found BC, B to C, which is this one right here, BC, check mark. So we found the force on those two members, we just have one member left to go. 
What we can do here is take a look at this triangle caused by those three forces. We have a force coming directly upward. This is F sub C. We found F sub C to be equal to 10,000 newtons. Then we have this force over here. This is the force caused by the compression on a AC. And then we have this force from B to C in this direction. This is BC, and we already have that force, right? BC was equal to 12,500 newtons. How about the angles? Well, notice that this angle here was equal to theta, and ooh, did I make a mistake here? Ah, this should have been theta. Ah, this is angle theta. So if you were confused before, I just realized this had to be theta, that is phi. But here, this angle is theta, which means the internal angle has to be also 36.87 degrees. This is a right triangle, so that's 90 degrees, which means this is 53.13 degrees. Okay, here we can see if our secondary method works, but before we do that, let's try the law of sines first. We want to find AC, we can use the law of sines saying that 10,000 newtons, divided by um, the sine of 53.13 degrees must equal AC divided by the sine of 36 0.87 degrees, which means that AC is equal to 10,000 newtons divided by the sine of 53.13 degrees times the sine of 36.87 degrees. 10,000 divided by 53.13, take the sine of that and multiply that times 36. 0.87, take the sign of that, and we get 7,500 newtons on that member. Which now means we also found the force on AC. Could we have found the force over here differently? Well, in this particular case, I would not recommend it. We could think of it as perhaps, let's see here, we might be able to manage by saying that the magnitude of this force should be proportional to the length here, 8 meters, the magnitude of this force should be proportional to 6 meters, and the magnitude of this force should be proportional to 10 meters. Let's try that and see if that works. We're going to draw this triangle here, and let me use a different color. Here we go. We have the length of 10 meters for this side, we have a length of 8 meters for this side, and we have a length of 6 meters for this side. Notice that the 8 meters should be associated with F sub C. F sub C is equal to 10,000 newtons. Notice that the 6 meter side is associated with the force on AC. The force on AC was found to be 7,500 newtons. And the 10 meter side is associated with the force from B to C. The force from B to C is 12,500 newtons. And here you can see that it does work since we did find the right triangle here. We can say that the relationship of 10,000 newtons divided by 8 meters is equal to 12,500 newtons divided by 10 meters, which is equal to 7,500 newtons divided by 6 meters. So the relationship holds. We could have used this method to find the force on um, the AC member. Anyway, if you're not sure, the law of science always works. And if you can find a clever relationship between the lengths of the beams and the magnitude of the forces due to a relationship to a right triangle, you can use this method as well. So there's another example of how to find the forces on a truss. Sleepy. You're sleepy.